Hello, everybody. My name is Bennett Tchaikovsky. I'm also known as the accounting professor. And today's video is going to be, how do I become a California certified public accountant? I, so the reason why I'm doing this video is because the Wall Street Journal in the last uh, month or so came out with three different articles talking about the shortage of accountants. If you are someone who is looking to make a transition, you're looking to get a license, you're looking to find something that employers really desire, the CPA may be the best thing for you. So I'm basically making this video so all of you can kind of see what the requirements are and I'll be showing you the different resources I have for you on my website. So my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are to those of myself and not my employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to the Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is designed to assist students and CPA candidates with determining their education requirement in the state of California via the California Board of Accountancy will oftentimes refer to certain other sources about the CPA educational requirements. Note that the California Board of Accountancy is the ultimate authority, right? So if somebody from your school is saying, oh, this cost counts, it may, but the CPA is the one who has the, high, the final say so in terms of doing it. And that's why I always give this disclaimer. So to become a CPA in California, you need four steps. And I want to share with you something. So I've had a friend of mine, his sister was trying to get licensed in Mississippi and Mississippi, like South Carolina, some of these states require that a lot of your classes have to be upper division, right? So I teach at Irvine Valley College full time, also teach part time at Cal State Fullerton. But as a, you know, at Irvine Valley College, we are a community college. So most of our courses are going to be considered to be lower division or lower division equivalents, even though they are in fact upper division, but we can't say that, but they're just courses we offer. So some states, though, they want you to take it at a four-year school, which is going to cost you more money, right? So it costs you more cash. I don't have a cool like emoji with the big dollar signs. So when you're going through and applying at different states, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Now, you can apply to be licensed in California. I don't even think it's required that you're a California resident. You know, they don't really care. They, it's really about have you met, gone through and met the requirements. And so if you are going through and thinking about it, even if you're not going to be moving to California, right? Um, even if you're not going to be moving to the state, you can always become licensed here and then see how that license could tra transfer to your state, right? So, but let's go ahead and talk about it. There are four steps. There's meeting the educational requirement. And this is again for California, meeting the experience requirement, passing the CPA exam, and then taking the professional ethics for CPAs, also known as the PEF. So as I was mentioning before, we are in a huge shortage of CPAs. I have never seen a job market like this, even though we're in the middle of a recession, and this is February, 2023, the job market is not that great. Uh, but if you go and become a licensed CPA, this is gonna give you yourself a base that you can basically go back to and you'll be using throughout your career. It gives you immediate credibility when you're going in and having business discussions, right? CPA, very, very special. I'm a CPA, so I think it is special. But again, it's a very, very special license. And I would give up my law degree well before I would be giving up my CPA license. But again, it's one of those things that is just very, very important, uh, If you, especially as you're going through and starting your career. Or if you're working in accounting, having the CPA license is going to validate your prior experience. So if you're not a CPA or if, if this looks too overwhelming, I get it. The thing I'm going to encourage you to do, though, is to look at becoming an enrolled agent or an EA. Why is this kind of cool? Well, there is no educational requirement, right? So my 13-year-old uh, my, my son, I would say my cat might be able to do it. But, you know, my kitten, you know, they hear me talk a lot about the CPA stuff, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know if they'd be ready for it, right? So, but <laughs> you have to be a human. Uh, there's no educational requirement. And again, an enrolled agent, what they can do is they can sign tax returns. They can represent you in front of the IRS. There's a lot of different things you can do. But if you're looking to become one, and I would say kind of doing it kind of as a bookkeeping thing on the side, um, you definitely want to take a review course for being an enrolled agent. 
and you want to go through and take classes, you know, you could take it at a community college, like financial, managerial accounting, individual business taxation, bookkeeping, QuickBooks, Excel spreadsheet courses. Now you don't have to take these classes, but again, if you kind of think about it, you could pass the EA exam, but if you don't have kind of just a basic understanding of accounting, you you'll find that in terms of your career, it's not going to be necessarily be limited, but you're going to need to be doing a lot of work on your own to kind of go through and figure it out. So going back to becoming a CPA, if this is what you want to do, first thing you're going to go through and do is you can go through and I'm going to provide this link below. But if you go through and you list out every single one of your courses and you share this with me, right? I basically right over here, um, share the file with me, right? Download it. Basically, there's no, I don't think there's anything malicious on it. All my students have said, download it and share it with me. And I promise you, I will get back to you on it as quickly as I possibly can. If you share this with me, I'll be able to assess pretty quickly. You want to list out everything, right? So AP classes, uh, classes, advanced placement classes you may have taken in high school, community college, right? Anything that's a, anything that is an accredited school, right? Then once you list them out, what I'll go through and do then is I will map it for you. An example of my mapping is that if I come over here, and this is one of my current students, uh, hello, Monica, you're being used right now over here. So this is something that I went through and I did this for her. So it's basically a matter of going through and writing out every class that you've taken, list out everything, because what you need to do educationally to become a CPA is you need 150 semester units, but only 24 of these need to sit, 24 need to be in accounting, 24 need to be in business. To sit for the exam, I need a bachelor's with 24 semester units in accounting, 24 semester units in business related subjects. And then I also need 20 semester units of accounting study of which only six need to be in accounting. So, and then over here for ethics studies, I need to take at least four, three semester units in accounting ethics, professional responsibilities, auditing or fraud. And then there's these other classes down here as well. But again, if you're trying to go through and you're trying to basically kind of sit here and figure out, it's like, okay, do I, how many units am I away? That's where we start, right? So send this over to me. You don't have to include your grades, no personally identifiable information. What I will do is I will basically sort it through. I'll put it in my hat and I'll say Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or Slytherin. No, I'm just kidding. That's my bad dad joke for the day. But if you send that over to me, I will sort it out for you and tell you pretty quickly in terms of what you need to do. I have done this for many, many students. I think I'm well over 100. But just remember that the California Board of Accountancy is the ultimate authority, but I should be able to give you kind of a good idea in terms of where you're going to be. If you're a business major, right, generally, and if you just took a little bit of accounting you're probably going to be between eight, 16 to 18 units away from being able to sit for the exam, right? So if you have your bachelor's in business, you probably took some accounting classes. So generally, you're going to be about 16 to 18 units away. And again, to become licensed, you'll need another six. But again, if you send that stuff over to me, I can go through it very, very quickly. Again, you don't have to take it at Irvine Valley College. You can take it wherever you want. My whole goal here is to help you become a CPA. So and I don't charge, I don't charge for that, right? So over here, you can take them in California. You can take these classes at a community college. If you're a California resident, we are 46 bucks a unit, right? So it's great. Um, so again, so what you're going to do is you're going to basically go through and fill this out. Now, if you weren't an, a business related major, right, it may take a little bit longer. In that case over here, you would, if you got a master's of accounting taxation or laws and tax, basically you could essentially go in here, take the account, basically get a master's, fulfill this, this is then fulfilled. And then you just have to do the ethics studies. But the problem with a master's degree, right, is that it is expensive, right? And it's going to cost you anywhere between probably 30 to 60, 70 grand a year, depending on where you're getting it from, right? California community colleges might take you a little bit longer to do it. But again, there's a huge cost savings. By the way, you could probably take 
If you're not working, you take classes at one college, enroll online in another. So there's a lot of ways to go through and to do things. Right. So right over here. So we've got over here again, if you're, if again, but if, even if I have, I've helped film studies majors kind of figure out what they need. So again, if I can help you with that, I'm more than happy to do it. Let's now move over to step two, which is I need to get experience, right? So I'm going to put these links below. This is a video I have over here about basically specifically about becoming a CPA in California. If you click on this link. You're going to see a lot of things basically below here, all these different links over here to kind of go through and help you out, right? So again, but what is exactly does it mean by, before we pass the CPA exam, what does it exactly mean in terms of getting like general, or what is what does it mean in terms of getting general experience? You have to be in California. You have to be supervised by a licensed CPA doing work. So if I look at this over here, Right. And again, there's different types of experience, but G is for general experience. It's basically I've been going through and I've been supervised, right? Basically, if somebody who is a CPA firm or just somebody who's a CPA who's willing to go through and sign off on my experience. By the way, it's a crime for the person if they if you've worked for somebody and they refuse to sign and you've been doing accounting work, they can get in big trouble. Right. If that ever happens to you, reach out to me and I'll tell you what to say to them and they'll sign it. Sounds like Luca Brasi. Or I think that was Vito Corleone. Okay. So coming, but no, uh, no band leaders here. Right. So if I come over here to basically this part here, the general requirement or general is very easy to get signed off on. If I want to get signed off on as an auditor, it's going to be a little bit more rigorous. Right. What is the qualifying experience? Right. So I have an auditor attestation, which I got many years ago, but again, it's not something you need. You can, there's different ways you can go through and become licensed, right? There's also a way you can do it over here. Uh, this is non-public, non-private industry or government, general experience, right? Again, this is another way you can get licensed. If you've taught accounting classes, Believe it or not, that's also a way you can go through and get signed off on it. So again, I have these videos here. I'm going to be including them below. So you need to, so again, have to have the 150. I then have to go through and need to have the general experience signed off on. And then we're now getting to our favorite part, which is passing the CPA exam. In order to sit for the CPA exam in California, I need a, that's not 150, but I need a 120 semester units with my bachelor's degree within 180 days of my application, right? So I took the exam in my senior year in college. And uh, because I was graduating within 100 days of taking the test, they basically allowed me to go through and do it. So coming over here, though, is like to sit, I need a bachelor's degree with the 24, 24 accounting and business. Need those within 180 days of basically applying. Then I need 20 semester units of accounting study to become licensed. It's basically the 20 and the 10. So oftentimes you'll hear of 150. It's really a bachelor's degree plus 30 semester units. You do not need a master's degree in California, right? That's not the requirement that's here. Basically, you need a bachelor's degree plus 30 semester units. So right over here. Again, if you want to watch about my CPA journey when I took the exam on paper, great place to go through and see the pain and agony that I went through many years ago. Now, the other thing I would also share with you as well is that, you know, the, the CPA exam is changing. It always changes, right? And when I took it, it was paper and pencil, no calculators. Now you get a kind of a limited version of Excel. Um, very nice, right? It's, it's a very, very different type of test. There is, though, a big change that's coming, and it happens to do with business environment uh, business environment concepts. That part is going to be changing on January 1st, 2024. So if you can sit for the exam now, I would recommend going through and trying to sit for the CPA exam now, getting this is, again, this is February 2023. You want to try to get BEC out of the way as quickly as possible, right? And again, 
the more, and like, if you're kind of a, and you, you're more than welcome to email me and message me. Like if you're kind of sitting there going, you know, employers won't hire me. Like, by the way, if you start passing parts of the CPA exam, that's going to show your interest in terms of becoming a CPA. So I really want to encourage you to, you want to take and pass that CPA exam as quickly as possible. If you're going to be working for a big four firm, you want to do it before you start, because when you start working 70, 80 hours a week, 70 to 80 hours a week, that sounds like a really good time, but it's not going to be a good time for you to be studying simultaneously. So again, it's going to be a lot of work, but that's what I would be going through and recommending. And I have a kitten visitor and just give me a moment. Sorry, guys, I'm really excited. I have a cat that maybe, oh, yes, we're going to have a kitten break. It's always good to have a kitten break. You can never have enough kitten breaks. Want to come up? See if he comes up and joins us. Oh, yes. Oh, Ozzy, you want to say hello to everybody? Yes, this is my cat, Ozzy, who I think wants to become a CPA, and that's why Ozzy is with us here today. Are we good to go, Ozzy? Yes. There we go. Okay. So right here, got base, got to sell account. Kit. What other way to say it? Yes. He's not really a kitten. He's a cat, but I call him a kitten. Okay. So that's basically taking and passing the CPA exam. You can do it. By the way, I had to take all four parts at once, which people look at me like I was like I'm crazy because I was. Now you take one part at a time. It is very, very doable. When you go through and use a review course like Becker, and just so we can kind of go through and see this, and I want to go through and log in, which I should have done before, but you know, I get distracted by cats. Always fun to do. Okay, so again, so what's going to happen over here is that all basically Becker and Roger, they do a great job in the other review courses too. They do a great job of basically showing you, they're going to basically provide you lectures, multiple choice questions, simulations. So they're going to basically help you get through uh, basically the stuff you need for the so I would really tell you that, like, even if you didn't learn something in accounting, if you think you had to take governmental or um, some other kind of accounting class, right, then don't worry about that. Like, it's not going to be like that big, you know, again, you'll learn it by using Becker, Roger, or one of the other CPA review courses. Okay. Now, the last one over here is basically is the PEF or the professional ethics test. And right over here, this is administered by California's Cal CPA. Now, the one thing about this, and the reason why I'm listing this out as step four, is I had a student who took it. She had passed the exam, got the 150 units. But what happens with this particular test is that the, val the score is only valid for a period of uh, two years, right? So Again, you want to probably do this like, okay, I've passed the exam. I'm about to get my experience done. I'm going to go through and take this, right? So the other thing that I also want to kind of go through and kind of remember too, is that we do not want to cheat on the CPA exam. Okay. So, and this is a video series that I did about Ernst & Young, right? Great firm. But basically back in, uh, was the one I say in the middle of 2022, they entered into a $100 million settlement with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And this was basically because they were going through and uh, essentially not being honest in terms of how they were basically going through. And, you know, there, there was, they were basically, they were passing around answers to the ethics test. So I'll leave this link if you want to go through and do it. But obviously, if we're in accounting, not a good idea to go through and cheat on things, right? Uh, leave that for the lawyers, which is the other half of me. So that's those are going to be the four steps that you need to go through and do. Um, I want to thank you for being here. I'm going to put the links down below. But again, if I can help you become a CPA, that is a great day for me. And Ozzy, you want to say goodbye? You want to say goodbye? Yeah, you're going to shake with me? Okay. In any event, have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to you becoming a CPA. Have a great one.